Hey, what's up guys? So welcome to episode two of How to Write a Song. So we last left off after we went over on how to uh, create an intro um, in Guitar Pro and the verse. Uh, we used um, a template song basically to kind of go about how uh, I made it uh, from a video I did, uh, Write a Song in One Hour. So today um, I did make a chorus in that video uh, and a bridge, but today uh, we're gonna go through and we're gonna completely create it from scratch. So just to show you what we have so far, let's go ahead and uh, uh, play this through. And you can see here that the um, snare is only on the three or on the four. So I'm probably gonna keep that on the two and four and it'll give it more of a lay back open feel. Now I didn't put it on the two here. I think it sounds fine without that extra snare hit, but we will probably use it on uh, the chorus. And the reason being, uh, is because it'll add, just add a little bit more speed to it, you know, be a little bit more, you can bang your head to it a little bit more. So we're trying to create like a big chorus here, something that's like, oh yeah, okay, now I'm in it. I mean, the, the verse here is still kind of cool. I mean, it's not kind of cool. It is cool. It's downright cool. Uh, let's see. Let's start it from the beginning. So... So we know we're gonna put uh, the snare on the two and the four, right? So let's just go through here and put some rests. So right here's the two, let's put the snare there. And the four. And then splash right there because it's the beginning of the next part. And then we'll come down here and put open eye hat, another one, and another one. So this is our template right here, right? The kick drum acts as an accent to the riff. So we've got the... That's where it comes from. So that last bit there. So we need to try to figure out what kind of riff we want to put here, right? So we're already using these notes here. The whole intro and verse all came from the bass tappy thing, right? And the reason why we use that this chord here is because when I did the bass tap, I ended up being on that nine. So I wanted to go ahead and use that again. So, so that's how I came up with that riff all together. I just went here, boom, whatever. I was like, okay, so let's go ahead and use this. I'm in drop A, so same note. So, we have that. I don't really wanna use the same pattern there. Uh, but we could go through, so we're, let's go through and do, uh, let's see, let's just play over this. I do kind of like that.
And the only reason I decided to work right here was literally because this note here is where I started on the intro. Uh, so we're kind of keeping it in the same space here in the same little block. Not that that's a, a rule that you have to do. It's just one technique uh, to try and figure out the next parts really. So we got, so let's do, something like that. That's it, that's the riff right there. That's it, so let's go ahead and put that in there. So I'm actually gonna put it on the, on the bass part first, because just because it's simpler to think about in terms of I'm not strumming, but um, I know strumming, like if you went in here and was like, okay, I'm gonna put all this strumming in here. It gets very complicated very quick and it's never going to sound the way you want it. At least I've never been able to figure that out. So, uh, let's see, that's on seven. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, so, dun, 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 dun. And boom, that's basically it right there. So let's go up here. I'll go ahead and put it here. And we're doing a power chord there. Obviously that needs to be shorter. Yeah. And so I want to play that twice. We still need another note there. Um, so we go. Obviously, we need one more. 
because that is the pattern of the riff. Let's go ahead and play it one more time. If I can keep the pick in my hands. Yeah, so actually that's where the, um, not seven, six, six, eight, where the next part comes in. I don't know why that's over there. All right, guys, so you know um, what's actually happening here. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish out this chorus real quick. All right guys, so we're back. So let's go ahead, before I put any more drums into this, we're gonna go over the drums together and the bass. Uh, let's go ahead and listen to this because I really want to show you uh, what it sounds like with a strummy guitar part on Guitar Pro without any of the drums or bass or and just one guitar. Um, so there's, uh, drums in this first part, there's none in the second. So it just sounds like, it doesn't even sound like that. There's no like groove to it. That's what it sounds like. Let's do the Um, a few reasons for that. One, the drums accent the parts, right? So right here, you got that snare accenting that hit. And it, when I'm accenting that hit also with the guitar playing. So <clears throat> one thing to keep in mind here is that the Guitar Pro isn't really going to have the feel as much with the guitars. Um, the guitars aren't going to have to do with much as of the feel as the drums are. Um, however, one thing you can go in here and do is you can accent notes. Um, so I think this is, yeah, an accent note, and that's an accent note. So then it adds on to it right there. So let's go ahead and put it here too. And then boom. It's important to get familiar with all this stuff over here, for sure. Yeah, you can't really, well, there I accidentally accented the wrong one, but you can't really hear it as much. But anyways, this is the guitar parts. All right, so let's go ahead and copy and paste it up here on this guitar part. Same exact thing, this is the chorus. Um, so for the bass, let me switch. So the bass can do a lot of different things uh, when it comes to guitar parts. So we're hitting up. That's the root notes. However, there's three other notes that's being played right here, right? So, a lot of different things you can do here. So, you know, even, you know, bass run. A lot of different things um, could do A little tabby thing there. Um, sometimes I like to do this. So let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and play along with it. can tell what I was doing there. On the accident notes, I was hitting that lower, that higher note there, right? 
and that can just add a little feel to stuff. However, um, that's something to keep in mind when you go to record. The bass player should be thinking about that uh, when he's playing, when you guys are rehearsing and playing live and see how it feels. For our purposes, I think just a basic So let's go ahead and, and throw those all in there real quick. Okay, so we got that in there. So a simple little guitar part, you know, it's just da, 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 da. So let's write the the um the drums now. So uh, we want to have that first note accent because that's how we're playing it on the guitar. So, right there, right there, uh, kick drum. So we got da 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 da. So we can go ahead and add a kick drum to all that too, and then come over here. Uh, open the hi hat. Let's go ahead and just put all our hi hats in here, and then we're wanting that snare on the two or on the two and the four and then we'll go ahead and put the kick here um, also it's important to start noticing the pattern of events uh, for the drums here because it's actually repeating every three times so we'll go ahead and put this here and I'll show you what I mean by that um, go ahead and guess what it is and then snare Snare. I will put, uh, boom. Um, so it's repeating, right? So like this basically is the whole entire rhythm section. So then you can just repeat it uh, from here and then there. So we'll just come down here, we'll take these and paste them there. Now, as you can see, I'm not going to take away this splash here, right? Um, just because it kind of, uh, okay, it was like one, two, three, one, two, three, kind of thing going on. So let's go ahead and listen to this all together. Now, listening to that, I kind of want to have those uh, those longer notes right here, those quarter notes, uh, he more heavily accented, right? Now, I'm thinking, of, okay, so what could we do there to accent those? Well, one way to accent something is the snare. But we already have the snare on right here and there. Okay, well that's not going to do then. So let's look at it. So we got the snare on the two and the four here. We got it on the two and the four here. 
but on the three is where that other snare is at. So why not? So let's break some rules here. Let's go ahead and add the snare there. Take that snare out of there. Take that snare out of here. Uh, could take that kick drum out of there because we don't use snares and kick drums at the same time. That's just kind of my thought process on it. And then now we're, let's look at this part right here. So boom, snare's already there, right? And then the snare's here. We'll go ahead and leave that snare there. So now all we did was change it up just a little bit, right? So let's listen to it. Boom, I kind of like that. So let's go ahead and take all this out and just go ahead and copy and paste it back over. And then we'll listen to it again. Now these drums are gonna be, I don't wanna be too meticulous with these because when we go to uh, Easy Drummer, they're gonna sound different. You're gonna to wanna to change things up based on what they sound like and everything and how it's, the song feels. Uh, just slightly, this is definitely just like, hey, these are my basic drum parts for this song. And that's how I think about all my drum parts when I'm writing them in Guitar Pro. See, now I'm thinking already that I want to have a snare on this and right here. Those are the same parts. Um, but I want to keep this kind of laid back. So let's wait a minute. And this is just the first chorus. And typically in the second chorus is when I want to make like a super big chorus, right? Uh, so let's look at this. So how would I typically go about making my next parts? Well, um, typically, unless... I've, the song is really pulling me towards a different kind of structure. Uh, I go ahead, verse, uh, verse B, we'll say. It's going to be exactly like this next verse, or this first verse, right? Um, only, um, I'm only going to play it like half, half of it. So let's go through an all the track copy. We'll come over here. We'll copy and paste that. Uh, go ahead and put that there because it wants to be an idiot's as worse. We'll leave the B out. So that's the same exact. I'll go ahead and take this out. It's the same exact first, only it's played uh, literally half the time. And then from here, I typically go back, grab my course, all track copy, come through here. And then I want to do, so we'll go ahead and label this as course. So you can see the course is being played here, but I go ahead and play it all over again. So playing the course. So in the second half of the song, or I guess you could say it's still the first half, but the mid part of the song, I play the verse again, half it, play the course again, double it. And I'm not going to worry so much about going in and making those changes to the um, chorus uh, like we talked about a second ago because I'm probably just going to worry about that uh, when I'm working with the MIDI drums. So now we have all this. And typically, this, this is the setup that I use unless, like I said, the song is pulling me in one direction or the other. So let's go ahead and write the um, bridge real quick or breakdown, whatever. Sometimes I'll have a bridge that's four measures and then I'll have a breakdown that's four or eight or some kind of something like that. I typically try to keep it no longer than the second chorus, right? Um, and then we're gonna make the, so we're gonna make the bridge and then we're gonna go through and uh, do the this whole second chorus all over again. Maybe I'll have an outro, maybe I won't. Uh, sometimes I'll just keep the music the same and the vocals will be doing something different at on the second half of the chorus. So let's go ahead and write this real quick. Uh, so we'll go ahead and actually listen to from here on.
And see, that kind of was a weird, um, I, I felt like that was a little bit weird, so we might need to add a pre-verse. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll come in here and we'll go to bar, insert bar. Uh, I'm just gonna label this for labeling sake. And you can go in here and type pre. Now, what am I gonna do for this uh, pre-verse? Well, let's go through and look. What did we do here? How'd that sound? We kind of did just abruptly do it there too. But here, so we know like typically if we were gonna go ahead and play that song over, it would be that one chord. So let's just go through. And we'll just do that. And that's an easy kind of like, don't want to say sell out, but it is the easy way to transition holding a note open. This note makes sense because we would be going back into that, um, into this chord here. And then what about for the drums? Well, you could just go ahead and take these drums or any drums that you've worked on so far. All right. And we'll go ahead and take that out, that out, that out, that out and that. And we're not done with these, but let's go ahead and listen to it. So it didn't really do anything. Um, like it makes the transition a little bit better for sure. Um, and this might be a moment where I go ahead and add like a drum feel or something. So we could do this. Um, I typically like to just work with the snares here. Uh, maybe I'll do the uh, bass drums later. And let's just see how that sounds. And let's add a splash there. And let's maybe take away that. Uh, nope, see? Don't like that, but I think I do like. Let's leave that there, that sounds okay. I'm not upset about it, it works. Let's just work on this bridge. So we got, we'll listen, okay, let's listen. Yeah, I don't like it as much with that double splash, but we'll fix it. And then I think I want to have, we might have a pre-verse or a pre-chorus as well. And I, yeah, we're going to have a pre, so like when you're coming through and writing this stuff and it sounds like, oh, that's a little weird. Let's work on it. So uh, what I'm actually going to do is use part of the verse um, dun, dun, eh, that's perfect. That's, I mean, that's literally perfect. The only thing we would have to come in here and do, uh, since I am going to have it be, when you make it three, four, right? So come up here, you can scroll over here. This part's going to be three, four. Boom. Realistically, you don't have to put all these. I think it just sounds fuller with all these extra, because I mean, I guess I do play it with three opens, but and then the drums, same exact thing that I was doing. And it was the half open. So let's listen to that. All right, let's start from here though. Oh yeah, but it was uh, 
muted. Palm mute, you can go highlight it, hit P. As you can see, this is the palm mute right here. Sometimes it doesn't sound as good, uh, the palm mutes, uh, but for this purposes, it does. Yeah, I think that works. All right, so bridge time. I've been trying to get the bridge forever now. Uh, so, With my bridges, I like to be a little weird. So I think I'm gonna do like a. Yeah, so that's gonna do. Dun, dun. Rest. Dun, dun. And it might be and we're playing common shapes for me to play honestly oh. Let's listen to that. Uh, let's see. Let's so let's go ahead and just add some drums here. That's gonna make it uh, a, a little easier. Let's also just go ahead and put it on the guitars. So I'm gonna palm mute this. Uh, and um, I'm gonna skip every other thing. So we could add it there. So now we're only playing the hi-hats on the one and the three. Hmm. And I wanna have a rest here, not too long. And we'll, let's go ahead and do this, actually, since we're having a rest there. Well, it's gonna be, I was gonna say we could do, like how we do, uh, how we come in here. But that's a longer rest, and I want a shorter rest. So let's just not even worry about that. Da -da -da. So it's, Well, let's not have a rest there. Screw that rest. Let's take that out. I'm not feeling a rest there. So let's just go ahead and we'll copy this. We'll actually, you know what we, yeah. Boom. I, can't, I like that for some reason, so we're gonna stick with it. Let's go ahead and take this over, copy, boom, paste. And then, so let's figure out the next part.
Yeah, I like that. Let's do that. So take that out. Boom. Uh, come over here. Open. Oh, it's going to be uh, boom. Uh, make that smaller. And we're going to do a bend there. Yes. Perfect. See, this is coming together oh so swiftly. Let's do it here. We'll put a bend there on the base as well. Not that's not what I wanted to do. Where's the bend? A little right there. And then for the drums, let's go ahead and do that. We can take that snare out. And then let's just go ahead and uh, all track copy. Let's put it here and let's listen to that. Yes, I'm super into this. All right, <laughs> all right, cool. So, uh, so we're playing it um, two times here, right? Uh, but that's four measures. I like to think in terms of measures as opposed to thinking in terms of how many times I'm playing it. Uh, it can add or subtract depending on the song and the riff, uh, like some tension, some resolve. Uh, cutting it short might make it, oh God, like what did they do here? Um, so we're doing this. So I'll tell you what, you see how we have the drums here? Boom, 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 boom. We're only playing that on the uh, on the one and the three. And then uh, every other thing we have, the snare right there on the four. So let's go ahead and we'll take these drums. Uh, we'll go ahead and all track copy, right? Boom. Uh, but this time, let's go ahead and add open hi-hat on every beat. And I'll show you what that can do to the song. So listen, listen closely here. It just adds a little bit more speed to it. I actually don't think I like it though, <laughs> but it does add a little bit more speed. Uh, let's go in and actually we'll, we'll, and I think the reason why I don't like it is because I'm real weird when it comes to, like if there's space in the song, then I want space in the song, right? So taking away from all that, uh, we'll leave the hi-hats uh, where they look comfortable, like on a note, and we'll take them away and see how that sounds. And I might want to use like a crash or something instead of a splash later when we go into the MIDI drums, but let's go ahead and figure this out. It kind of adds like a uh, uh, kind of thing to it, like a like a like you're like you're going up in the air and hovering for a second kind of feel. But this is something we're being really nitpicky with the drums. Like I said, I've been saying it. We don't need to be nitpicky. Um, so I really really like this. Uh, we're playing it. How many times? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's fine. Uh, I do like that. Uh, playing it that many times sounds okay to me. Uh, the, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, the video is getting pretty long. Uh, this, if we go in, I'm going to keep it right here. This is this is it. Um, we may. Hmm. I do kind of want a longer bridge, but I tell you what, let's do this. Let's make this. Let's make this bridge longer. All track copy. 
we'll play it double the time and instead and then so boom and then the only thing else left to do come over here copy all track copy boom and let's go ahead and label that chorus boom and then halfway through, so we're playing it, you know, how many ever times. Let me find the edge there. This is it here. I might come through and just put like outro. And that could be a place for like a solo, you know, maybe you're playing the chorus, but there's a solo going on and you're not doing vocals. Uh, and then the outro is basically the chorus and you're doing the chorus, but maybe the lyrics are a little different or the drums are changed up a bit and they're playing, um, you know, instead of playing uh, a hi-hat on every uh, beat, it's playing it on every sub. Just a... And it just kind of adds like some speed and up, upbeat, like tension. Um, but this is the song, guys. Let's listen to the end. And I kind of like that ending, too. I don't think I need, like, an outro outro. Um, maybe we'll create an outro, uh, in Reaper. Uh, but this is going to be the end of the video. In the next episode, we're going to be, uh, exporting these drums into Easy Drummer uh, in Reaper. And then we'll be working on it from there. But I'll see you guys in the next video. If you like and enjoyed this video or you're interested to see what the end result is, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd appreciate it if you share this video to all your music friends. Um, some people this will help. Some people will find an interesting kind of niche uh, little thing here. Uh, but like always, guys, I'll see you in the next video.